Hey there guys, and welcome back to yet another episode of Building Posts. Now I know I've been promising these for a while, but we are finally back at it, and today we are going to look at a uh, Celestnia green-white post deck. So, for those, and let me get the recap real quick, for those of you who are not familiar, this is a series where I, I wrote an article and I talked about the impact of the post lands, Glimmer Post and Cloud Post, and what they did to Pauper. Now there was some speculation, and it was basically a, an experiment to see what, if any, impact these have on the format. Now, obviously, they do have an impact, um, but the experiment was really to see if you could take these and use these to make just any kind of deck work. Um, what we did is we basically sorted things out. We know there are guild post decks, and we know there are basically mono post decks, which are single colored. And we've gone through this whole series, and I put up three videos. One is me building the deck. The second is going to be a video of me playing the deck, and then the third is a recap on what I thought about the deck. So, we're at that point in time, we're kind of really scraping the bottom of the barrel here. We've gone through, and I'm pretty sure we've covered all of the monocolored decks, even down to an artifact post deck, which was a lot of fun. Um, what we have left now is a whole bunch of guild posts. We've covered most of them, basically everything including blue is going to be great, but we're kind of, like I said, literally scraping the bottom of the barrel here. We don't have really a lot of options left, and we've kind of abused and used every kind of combination that is efficient. Um, what it comes down to is, is basically this. What I have found from uh, the post decks is that the best thing available to them is any kind of control package. And, you know, that shows up really well in things like Mono Red, it works, and it shows up in the Is It Post and Demir Post and things that you see on a regular basis. Um, what doesn't work as well is usually things like Aggro Post, and that can be seen in the Mono White version, which is Rebels, and the Mono Green version. And these are decent rogue options, but they're not really big contenders on a regular basis. So, when we come down to things like this, we're down to Green White Post. Uh, it's it's really kind of tough because I feel like some of the ideas are going to be forced um, and things are, are just a little bit more tricky. So here's what we're going to do. Now usually for those who are familiar, when I build a deck I sit here with a blank slate and I put together a deck for you and, uh, and take it from there. But we're going to do things a little different. What you see in front of you here is going to be a copy of Green Post as I play it whenever I am uh, it, you know testing against somebody or playing on my own for casual interests. Um, and what we're going to do here is take this and alter this by adding white to it. Now, I know some of you might be thinking this is a bit of a cop-out, but hear me out on this one. Now, if you're building any kind of deck, you know, for the post lands, there are a whole bunch of uh, staple cards. If you look at blue, and blue is the easiest example, you have things like um, Mystical Teachings and uh, Condescend and stuff like that, these big, you know, mana, mull drifter, stuff like that, they're, they're basically staples for the color when you're building a post deck. Um, if you're using red, a staple is going to be Rolling Thunder, things like that. So what it came down to is when I sat here and I looked through all the cards, and I did take some while to, to kind of get a preliminary strategy going for how to build this deck. And what I found is there really isn't a lot in white that can make use of this big mana. You know, you get things here like the Crusher and the Herds and stuff like this, where you have these cards that usually you would not be able to play in Pauper because of the fact that they have so much mana in their cost that it's hard for this format usually to put them into play, and that's where the posts come in. Um, you know, Condescend is another great example of this. So when you look at white and what it has available to it in these giant costed spells, there's really nothing there. Uh, you get a couple of big walls and, you know, just like creatures with big toughness, and, and they don't really do anything special. So what it came down to, excuse me, I'm choking here, um, what it came down to is, I, I figured if I sat here and I built a deck, you know, these go-to green cards, I'm going to go to anyways. Things like Reap and Sow. You look at Reap and Sow, and that is just the best example you have available to you for not only land fetch, but it kind of gives you an edge in the matchup, um, the mirror matchup. So, you know, what you need to do is, I, sorry, what you're, you're going to end up doing is going to these cards anyway. Reap and so is going to be brought in. Some of these, you know, land producing or mana producing walls are going to come in. Tusker is probably going to come in. Crop rotation. So basically, it's going to end up being the same thing, you know, whether I build it from scratch or whether I sit there and, you know, alter this deck. So 
it, it's just, it's one of those things, you know, it's, it's like, you might consider it a cop-out, but to me, it's going to be this way anyways, so I think this is really the best way to do it. Um, I think what white can bring to the table is a really decent balance. You know, green is able to provide a lot of the the kind of manpower, so to say. You know, it's got the creatures, but it often lacks some of the control aspects, which I think we can get through some white enchantments, um, and we'll see that in a minute. So here we go. We're going to take a look at this right here. And I'm going to start by, I'm going to leave the mana, mana in. Please give me a base. I know I'm going to stick to 22 lands as well. I think it's kind of a, a good level thick. Um, but what I'm going to do is start taking things out. And I think I'm going to start with these Acid Mosses Karsts. So what happens here is, you know, if every color has its control aspects, it controls things, you know, it can do some land destruction, but it also can do control as far as artifacts and enchantments are concerned. Black is usually known for creature kill and discard. Blue, it's usually just counter control, stuff like that. Um, bouncing thing. Red uses burn spells to kill and, and often has a lot of artifact or land destruction as well. Each color kind of has its own control aspect and in this sense green really kind of balances out the fact that it doesn't have a lot of control in this list by bringing in a lot of that land destruction. Um, because we're going to use white to balance out some of that control I think it's it's safe to say we can get land destruction. I'm also going to get rid of the marauder here. Now this is a one of usually in most green post decks, and it's a great card. It really triggers a lot if you're playing like the affinity matchup, but on its own it's not that spectacular. Uh, you do have the expedition maps here, which will give you some added benefit from it, but I don't think it's enough to warrant the one of. It's not really going to be relevant enough, and I'd, I'd like to free up a little more space for some of the white cards I want to add. Um, we're going to keep kind of this creature base package here. Um, the four crushers, the Ooh, cover that up here, the Four Herds and the Tusker. The Tusker is a great land fetch card and it acts as a big body even if you need it, so I think we're definitely going to stick to those. We're going to keep at least some empaths. I don't know if we're going to keep all four of these guys, but we're going to definitely keep those to fetch out some of those. Um, it, you know, Mystical Teachings is a very important card to Is It Post because of the fact that it can search out pieces of the puzzle. Aura Herds, in the same sense, is very important to Green Post because it can search out other herds. Um, Empath, in the same way, can be used to fetch out the herds, to start the herd, you know, start the stampede, so to say, or um, fetch out the crusher, either way. Let's see what else. Um, one thing I really want to add, and I'm definitely going to start with adding, is going to be the prism. Now, those who have been following the series are kind of familiar with my, my journey to understanding Prophetic Prism and its impact on Glimmer Post, Cloud Post decks. When it came down to it, and you're just you're just starting out in this series, and I looked at it and I said, okay, if you're running a deck that has this heavy colorless mana, um, what it's going to come down to is if you're running two colors in that deck, you really need the prisms in order to balance that out. You know, to, to take what little land is left in actual colors and split that in half, you're really going to need the color changing ability of the prism. Um, this this is my initial thought going into this whole thing, but what I found out as I started building some of the colorless versions is that the prism was very helpful even in the monocolor decks because of the fact that it allows you the chance to switch out some of that colorless mana. Even if you're in a, a single colored deck, being able to use that colorless mana and filter it into another color is going to be very beneficial to you because you will find yourself in situations where you either have all cloud posts or glimmer posts or a mix of the two and you don't have a lot in the way of colored lands. Um, even one forest in play is not going to be enough to really get things going because you need two for things like reap and sow if you're going to entwine it. Just something to, to keep in mind there. So I really wanted to add those prisms to the deck. I think it's, you know, even the, the extra draw, that one card draw, that cantrip there is, is great. Um, I think kind of as a whole, that card really works well because it has that ability to kind of filter your mana and give you that one extra card draw. So we're going to work around with that a bit. Um, I think I am probably going to cut down these walls as well. The deck runs four copies of Overgrown Battlement and four copies of Wall of Roots. Uh, I don't know. Um, the difference between these two is basically the Overgrown Battlement is going to suffer from summoning sickness. When you put that into play, you need to wait until the following turn until you can activate its ability for mana. Um, the Wall of Roots, when you put it in, because it is not a tap effect, can generate mana right away. So there is some benefit to running both of those as opposed to just one or the other. And there's really, you know, you can, you can you know, make an argument saying Battlement is the, the more important one because of the fact that it can generate extra mana and more mana than the other one, but I think it, it's really essential to keep a balance of those two. Um, let's start filtering off some of these colors. Okay, 
So the most important card I want to bring in here as far as white is concerned is going to be Oblivion Ring. Oblivion Ring is a fantastic card. It's one of the best uh, removal options for white, in my opinion, especially in Pauper, because of the fact that it removes the card from the game. Um, it can target almost anything. And, I mean, it, it, it does have some, some drawbacks. The fact that it is an enchantment makes it weak, but you have to look at the format as a whole. And in Pauper, there's not a lot as far as enchantment removal is concerned. This is why things like Hexproof are able to show up from time to time, because they basically use a whole bunch of enchantment spells to pump up their creatures. Um, there's also an Enchant Storm and an Enchant Aggro deck that have been very successful in their times as rogues. So enchantment removal can definitely hurt a Blade Ring, but because of the fact that it is not run heavily in the format, makes this a decent option. Um, and what I'm going to do, let's add three copies. We'll go with those guys. Um, that's something I might even up to four. All right, let's cut these down. I am going to drop the walls. I'm going to run three of each. Like I said, there's definitely benefit to running two, and I think I'm just going to go ahead and cut those out. Um, real quick here, I, I do have a sideboard on this green post deck, but I am not going to bother with building one for this because of the fact that it's it's going to be definitely kind of a more casual thing. I, I'm not sure how well it's going to hold up. Um, you know, I'm, I think there can be some merit to this basic idea of adding a little extra control to the green aspect of the deck, um, but whether or not white is the answer to that, I'm not sure. Um, maybe if you, you know, wanted to take this concept a little further and try, you know, black options or red options to bring in some extra control that that's up to you what else um, another thing I wanted to talk about with these prisms and I think I want to bring in um, is hobble it's hobble a card I'm thinking of yes yes it is okay so what I love about prism we talked about the color change but what I really love about this card is the fact that it draws a card now it's only one card and you might think okay big whoop you're drawing one card well this is true but that one card is fantastic. If you look at the Is It Post deck, it's stalling for time. It uses the Glimmer Posts, and every Post deck does this. It uses these to draw, um, to draw out the clock, to gain a whole bunch of life, and really keep things going until it finds an answer. So what I want to do is use some draw spells here. What the Glimmer Post does, you gain the life, and then you have this whole package of blue draw spells and the Mull Drifters, some use Deep Analysis, you know, any variety of different things have been used to really draw things, the teaching, stuff like that, to really, you know, cut through your deck until you find your win condition. In this deck, we want to do something similar. You use the herds, you use the empaths, and they fetch out important pieces. What I want to do is be able to draw as many cards as possible. You thin out your deck using the expedition map and the crop rotation, but things like hobble and prophetic prism, uh, let's go with three, um, these things are going to be able to, you know, it's drawing one card, but that one card is going to be absolutely essential. Um, it's really, you know, it's it's fantastic. You can't say enough for card draw in this deck, and I, I know, I'm in this game, I mean, I know regular followers of mine know I'm a little obsessed with card draw, but that's okay. That's okay. Now, the other card that I consider, Feathers. Oh, that's not, it's, it's Feathers? Feathers. I always want to say it's Faith's Feathers. Um, the other card that I want to bring in here, and I said a lot of the, the white that I was going to add to this deck is going to be Enchantment Control. Um, I think it gets a lot of great options. You know, Oblivion Ring is fantastic. Uh, you also get Journey to Nowhere, and again, that's that's great because it's a remove from game creature removal. And you have that, again, that, that impact that enchantments have because there is not a lot ran as far as Enchantment Control goes. Um, so, you know, Journey to Nowhere is really beneficial there as well. Now, Hobble can be used as um, a bit of a, you know, control option. It prevents creatures from attacking. They are also prevented from blocking only if they're black. So most creatures, when you put Hobble on them, will be able to block, um, just not attack. But Faith's Fetters gives us an option to uh, get rid of both of those. It uh, Enchanted Permanent is not allowed to attack or block. And more importantly, it gives you this extra bonus of 4 life, and it prevents activated abilities. That can find some use in this game. The 4 life is great because, I mean, you're, you're already looking at the extra life off Glimmer Post, so I'm thinking that the extra life gain off Faith Fetters will continue to balance things out. Um, where I think this deck might struggle a bit is is the fact that it's so low on creatures, and I think this is a struggle that Green Post has generally. You have this the same package. It's basically a package of... of nine to ten creatures that are going to be the meat of the deck. So 
you have you know uh, this this format it's 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 kind of an aggro based strategy but if they can't you know if, if they have eight to ten creature control or counter spells you know it's it's going to screw you up because of the fact that they kill those eight creatures and then what do you do if you have one Urox herd on the field it's a 4-4 four, four trampler and that's great but it's not as strong as if you have two on the field and they're attacking the herd gets bigger and it it you know as there are more of them and there's there's not much you can say beyond that it's it's self-explanatory if they kill off all of them except for one a 4-4 four, four is not something to be totally pissed off about i mean look at all the the 4-4s four, out there and sure they're tough to deal with but a lot of decks like Affinity will run way more of them than, you know, you have available if you have just one left. You know, Crushers deal with them. They, you, you kill them off, and they're, they're useless. You find an answer for it? Eight to ten creatures. There's there's plenty of answers. Mono Black Control is, is going to be a very tough matchup for this, I imagine, because of the fact that it's basically an entire non-creature package of creature removal. And there's very little to be said about that. Um, so... We're going to, you know, do our best here. Hopefully some of the extra card draw and the stalling on that life gain will be great. It'll help us find those fast, but uh, it could be could be tough. It's it's one of the reasons I think Green Post has not gone beyond that line and has not become kind of a major competitor out there is because of the fact that it, it kind of suffers from that, that ability. You kill eight creatures and you win the game. Um, so let's see. We are now sitting at 64 cards. I really don't think there's anything else I want to add to it. There really is this, this solid structure that I want to keep intact with the, the empaths, a couple of these walls, crop rotation, reap and sow, and this, this creature package. And I don't want to alter that too much more. Um, so we have to cut out four cards. I think I'm going to take the cheap way out here. And I'm going to cut prism down. I'm going to cut expedition map down. We'll cut an empath. Okay, so this this re it really is the cheap way to do it. Um, you know, a real solid. You know, I, I always tell people, and I'm looking at deck lists that, that they send me, or we're discussing things on forums and stuff. I really, you know, focus your deck, and if you have a whole bunch of two and three of cards, odds are that it's not focused enough on what you're trying to do, and I think this deck might suffer from that. Um, I have all these cards that I wanted as four ofs, and they're not all going to fit, so now I'm going to cut them all down. Um, I mean, these are things that I still want in. I, I want to keep the expedition maps and the prisms and the empaths. I mean, the whole point of these is to be able to get that mana going as soon as possible and then get things on. Um, you know, so you can get these big creatures into play as soon as you can. I guess I'll cut fetters back one more. The life gain is great, but I, I guess, you know, when you're already running four copies of Glimmer Post, it's not really necessary to to run that much extra life game. And that'll still give us plenty of control options. Um, we'll see how this goes. Like I said, I'm not a big fan of green post because of the fact that it, it seems so vulnerable, I guess is a good way to put it. Um, but we are we are really kind of coming to the end of the series, and there's not a lot of great other options here, um, you know, for, for, like, combos and things like that to work into the deck. Like, you can generate infinite tokens by bringing in the Midnight Presence combo, but what's the point? I mean, it would be so vulnerable in this deck. You don't really need all that extra mana to pull it off. I, you know, I, I did a series, um, did I do videos on that? I think I did videos on that, yeah. Um, where, you know, you can see that the deck works fine without the, the use of these Locust Lands, so there really just isn't a lot. And, you know, feel free, absolutely, to, to point something out that I may have missed here, but Looking through it, I didn't find a lot as far as green and white was concerned that really kind of pulled this all together. I mean, any kind of big combos or, or you know, things that stuck out and said, you know, this you have to try. Um, so I think this is going to work. I think it, it, it really has a, a decent chance, I think, personally, of kind of making up for the lack of control that this kind of deck has and brings it a little more towards a mid-range strategy. But we'll, we'll see. Um, so this is, you know, first video. Go check out I'll put uh, links in the description there. You can check out the deck building part of it, and you can check out the uh, the final analysis and see what what I thought and whether whether I thought it worked or not. So hope you guys enjoy. Um, those who are following me uh, on my my issues with Pure, just uh, all I, I can say to you is is follow me on Twitter and uh, it's at mtgojustsin, and I'm gonna keep you updated there. 
I, I'm looking around for, for somewhere to go with things, and hopefully we can keep my series going. Um, enjoy, and check out those other videos.